Welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. This video concentrates once again on the Mona Lisa of material science, the iron carbon phase diagram. Let's take a look at the individual sections of the iron carbon phase diagram for the metastable system step by step so that you can understand the processes taking place and the resulting microstructures. Let us begin by looking at the solidification range, leaving aside the protectic for the time being. At 4.3% there is an eutectic point. The carbon dissolves in the material, reduces the melting point of pure iron from 1536 degrees Celsius to 1147 degrees Celsius. We have already discussed that eutectic or near eutectic alloys are particularly well suited for casting since they are characterized by a low melting temperature and ductility and do not easily segregate or shrink. Consequently, the carbon content of most cast iron materials is at or slightly below 4.3%. Homogeneous gamma solid solutions develop up to a carbon content of 2%. This corresponds to the area of forgeable steels. As soon as a microstructure contains lediburite, which is hard and brittle, the material can no longer be hot or cold worked. It can only be cast. As previously explained, a carbon content of 6.67% corresponds to a cementite content of 100%. All alloys in the carbon content range of 0 to 2% behave like the basic type complete solubility in liquid and solid state. Thus, below the liquidus formation of solid solution occurs. The gamma solid solutions are able to grow in the melt without any constraint and form elongated structures with branches to the sides which are referred to as dendrites. These crystals become richer in carbon content due to increasing formation. In the example shown here, the carbon content has already increased from C1 to, to C2. On complete solidification, the microstructure consists of homogeneous gamma solid solutions. That is to say, austenite. These crystals are interstitial solid solutions with carbon dissolved in the, in the interstitial positions of the face-centered cubic iron lattice. When a hypoeutectic alloy solidifies, the concentration of the solid solutions increases to a maximum of 2%. As the temperature decreases, the melt approaches point C and thus toward an eutectic composition of 4.3% carbon. The microstructure then consists of gamma solid solutions and eutectic. As we have already seen, eutectic in the binary iron carbon system consists of a fine-grained mi mixture of fine gamma solid solutions and cementite, which we refer to as lidoboride. Accordingly, hypoeutectic alloys behave like the basic type decreasing solubility in solid state. The resulting crystal mixture precipitates the component in excess during the melt. When a hypereutectic alloy solidifies, Fe3C crystals precipitate to form primary cementite. As the temperature drops, the carbon content of the melt, starting from high concentration levels, decreases and approaches the eutectic composition. Upon reaching the solidus, the eutectic line, eutectic lederbarite is formed. The crystal mixture then consists of primary cementite and lederbarite. Next, let's look at the phase transformation in the solid state, which is important for steels. An important distinction has to be made between hypopolitic and hyperpolitic steel. Steels with a carbon content below 0.8% are referred to as hypopolitic or hypoeutectoid steels. Above the line GS, 
there are unsaturated homogeneous gamma solid solutions with a carbon content of 0.15% in the example shown here. The transition from the gamma to the alpha phase starts after reaching line Gs, which shifts to lower temperatures as the carbon content increases. In the second phase, body-centered cubic ferrite forms in austenite. As temperature decreases, the percentage of ferrite increases and the carbon content of austenite increases toward point S. Whenever a hypopolytic steel reaches the temperature of 723 degrees Celsius at slow cooling rates, that is line PSK, it consists of proeutectoid ferrite that has been separated out and gamma solid solutions which have not yet been transformed with 0.8% carbon. As it passes through the line PSK, the phase-centered cubic austenite solid solution changes into a body-centered cubic alpha ferrite. Inserted carbon atoms are forced out of the developing alpha lattice and into adjacent areas where, together with iron atoms, they form the intermetallic Fe3C phase known as cementite. The microstructure of ferrite with fine layers of cementite is called perlite. At room temperature, ferrite exists alongside perlite. Steels with a carbon content above 0.8% are called hyperperlitic or hyperoitectoid steels. Carbon solubility in these steels decreases with decreasing temperature, as indicated by line ES, which is known as a solubility or saturation line. As a result, the carbon atoms must diffuse from the gamma solid solution. They move to the grain boundaries where they form cementite crystals in the form of secondary cementite. At the line PSK, the steel first consists of a gamma solid solution with a carbon content of 0.8% and a network of secondary cementite. Then the austenite transforms into perlite, as is also the case in hypoperlitic steels. Naturally, engineers are not interested in the structure because it is nice to look at. Instead, we want to draw conclusions about the mechanical properties that result from the microstructure. With knowledge about the various hypo and hyperpolitic microstructures, we are now able to understand the development of mechanical properties of steel as a function of the carbon content. The increase of the hardest component, that is cementite, is a linear function of the carbon content. This results in an almost linear increase in hardness Hb. The percentage of cementite is, however, not the only decisive factor. We also need to look at its position within the microstructure. Thus, we can observe a significant increase in tensile strength Rm as the percentage of cementite increases, as long as the cementite is embedded in the tough ferrite in the form of perlite. If grain boundary cementite occurs, the strength does not only stop increasing further, but actually decreases slightly. As a consequence of the brittle cementite phase, the elongation at break A is strongly reduced when the carbon content increases. Therefore, if I need a steel that is soft and as tough as possible, the carbon content should be below 0.2%. Hypopolitic steels with a carbon content between 0.2 and 0.8% offer a good combination of toughness and strength. If my component needs to be as hard as possible, but does not require considerable toughness, I can choose a carbon content substantially above 0.8%. The carbon content does not only influence the mechanical properties of steel, it also affects the technological properties of the resulting material. 
An increase in carbon content lowers the melting temperature, which generally improves the castability of the material. Cast steel, which is iron with a carbon content below 2%, cannot be used in thin-walled casting because of the relatively high casting temperatures and the precipitation of gamma solid solutions in the melt. Near hypoeutectic cast iron alloys exhibit excellent castability. The high melting temperature of steels with low carbon content, which is a disadvantage for casting, proves its advantage for hot workability at correspondingly high temperatures. This facilitates greater metal forming with smaller force compared to steel with a higher carbon content. In general, soft ferrite is very ductile. However, the percentage of cementite, which increases with an increase in carbon content, reduces elongation at break and necking. Consequently, the force and work required for cold working increases with the carbon content. Above 0.8% carbon content, considerable cold working is no longer possible because of the brittle interface cementite. As the percentage of cementite increases, so does the cutting force required and the abrasive wear of the cutting edge during material machining. In contrast, machinability considerably improves in the stable system in which carbon exists as, as graphite. The availability of steel is determined by its ability to reduce stress produced during welding by local heating and rapid cooling with the help of microplastic deformation. This is why steel with low elongation at break are at least prone to cracks. In general, it can be assumed that there is good availability up to a carbon content of 0.25%. This does not imply that steels with a carbon content above 0.25% cannot be welded. Instead, the availability of these materials requires a specific set of conditions or methods. The hard and brittle microstructures that can form at higher carbon content, especially martensite, make it possible to significantly increase hardness and strength by heat treating the steels. In this connection, steels with a carbon content between 0.2 and 0.6% are of particular interest. We will learn more about these microstructures in the next chapter. I hope all of you will have an opportunity at some point to admire the sheer beauty of these microstructures under an optical microscope. Thanks for your attention. I hope you'll be back to watch our next video tutorial.